All right, so Tonex One has been out for a while. We did a video comparing the Helix and the Tonex. Mm. And uh, Suze, you you put the Tonex in a in the loop of the Helix, and this whole this whole test started because you kind of said. Uh, you know, is this, uh, if Helix 2 came out, right, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it had, like, uh, uh, Capture Tech, or mm -hmm. if they said, hey, we made Capture Tech in the original Helix, yeah, it's 179 upgraded, yeah. yeah, would you right. buy so, it? A $179 software upgrade. Yeah, yeah. yeah, would you do it? I would. Seems like a good deal to me. Yeah, seems like a good deal. <laughs> yeah. So we took some of our Tonex um, uh, captures and then tone matches that we make with the Helix. So we tone match the Helix to the real thing. And then we go, and then we see how, we wanted to see how close those things mm -hmm. are together. But and you put the tone, the tone X1 in the loop. In the loop. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, everything's running same effect, same all that stuff, just replacing right. the amp there. And uh, what amps did we do? We did the AC44, mm -hmm. um, the Bandmaster, and the Mars Astra. <laughs> comment on that video mm -hmm. it kind of it, it was pretty popular it got a lot of views and uh uh the comment section was Full. i thought yeah yeah I, I mean it was active i thought pretty split what did we think mm. of the whole thing what was your yeah. takeaway you played them Suze. yeah i would say going in i thought the tonex is going to own the helix like this yeah. is not going to be it's going to be close but night night and day almost yes you know? mm. And it was not. It was not night and day. It was very murky. There was times that I preferred the Helix mm -hmm. to the Tonex. Mm -hmm. uh, there was times where I preferred the Tonex to the Helix. Yeah. Um, mm. And I kind of left the thing going, look, if what you're gaining out of this upgrade, so to speak, is um, having capture, you're losing a lot more, yes. Like, which is the ability to save the amp in a hundred different settings yeah. across all these different presets yeah. and snapshots and everything like that. You can't access that through the Helix unless you get into MIDI and like you're using the bigger Tonex or whatever like that. But those Tonex ones, they're just meant to be like on. This is my amp. This is a secondary setting. That's oh. it. Yeah, like two set. I mean, yeah. it's like A or B, right? right. That's so, how so what you lose by adding that as your amp in your Helix mm -hmm. or your HX Stomp or whatever you're using it in, you lose one of the greatest features of the Helix, which is like snapshots, mm -hmm. changing the amp settings. When the gain goes up, the treble comes up a little bit, the bass goes down. Yeah, you have all that control. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can, if you're a person who doesn't utilize that and you kind of use, like you kind of build your Helix stuff more as uh, stomps into an amp. Yeah, if you're not you know? touching the amp block, yeah. maybe it's more, but even yeah. the sounds alone, I was thinking okay. like for the, for the, 
the yeah. process of plugging this in and dragging more gear to yeah, the gig. Yeah, sure. It's a uh, hassle. It's kind of a wash. I mean, I will say this. I thought uh, the Helix and the Tonex sounded very close. Where mm. I most noticed it was the Bandmaster. Mm. That's where I felt. And I think this is where, I come, where it comes back to, like, not all models are created equal. That's true. Um, so, like, for that Bandmaster sound, it felt like we were getting... To me, what I kind of hear is a tendency in the Helix sometimes, too. The low end won't go super deep and low. Like... It will get, I mean, it'll, it'll almost get a little bit of a grumble, mm -hmm. you know, in a way that I feel like the Tonex in those two amps, you could hear like a, a, a lot more depth, even on a, a dirty amp, you could end. hear yeah. like, yeah, a little more yeah. clean fidelity in the low end where the mm -hmm. Helix sometimes has a tendency to get like grumbly. Um, mm. I don't know. That's just a tendency I've noticed overall. And yeah. maybe that's more up to the model. I felt like the Bandmaster had the most difference. Hmm. The Tonex seemed a little more breathy and wider. The AC44 was like the same. Uh, now, this is also like just like this is also our tone match stuff versus yeah. the Tonex. So yeah. it's it's these are referencing the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're referencing the same stuff. So yeah. it would make sense that we can make them sound as close as possible. So I think the comparison that people are hearing when they listen to that other video or what, or this or whatever, it, that's as close as we're going to get it. Yeah. Cause we're, they're both referencing the same thing. Right. Whereas, um, yeah, uh, I you agree. might be very happy just picking up a helix, dialing your stuff in. Yeah. Right. Same thing with tone X, but if, if we're trying to get them together, I agree that the, the bandmaster did sound the most different. Um, I don't know that I preferred really one or the other mm -hmm. in in the, at least the clips. Yeah, we just heard them. Sue's playing. Yeah, I didn't yeah. play it. I'd like to play it eventually. I see what you're saying too about like if you replace the t the amp block with the Tonex, that's not like a one to one. No, you're feature giving for, up a lot. You're yeah. giving up a lot of features because you mm -hmm. can. There's a lot of things. However. The biggest thing I have is like, what is the process of creating one of these tone matched things mm -hmm. in the helix? Not everyone's going to go do that. Right. And mm -hmm. getting a helix, at least in my opinion, getting a helix to sound that good <laughs> just with stock stuff and not doing tone matching. Yeah. It's pretty, that's a tall order for me. The comments are going to hate you. I know. That's, fine. A, that's, that's a fine. good point, though. People, I mean, if we were yeah. comparing. Just playing the tone X versus what you could just get on the helix. It wouldn't be fair, but it would have been a huge chasm. It I would have been yeah. a different. It would have been a difference. I think yeah. the tone matching is a big is a big thing. I mean, I'm not even going to say. Maybe it's it's not even about what it sounds better. It's just like they're very different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. That's a good way. Yeah. Um, and so the tone matching crosses that gap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, is it an upgrade? Is like kind of the I think the underlying question. Yeah. You know, and at one hundred seventy nine dollars, is attractive to do an upgrade. Maybe at the full yeah. three ninety nine, it's not. I as don't. Attractive. Is it three ninety nine or two ninety nine? For which one? Big Tone X. Three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. Yeah, yeah. 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 So at four hundred bucks, it's. I mean, based on the clips, no, you're not getting a huge. Yeah. See, upgrade. I though I really dig how you can get like different plexis, and, and now there's a couple different plexis in there. There's a there's a trem, uh, uh, model in the mm -hmm. helix and there's the plexi mm -hmm. one, you know, and there's all this stuff. But I kind of think there's a, there's a lot of flavors in the real world that, you know, aren't in the helix and you get more variety, mm -hmm. you know So what that's I mean? what I was going to ask too, is sure. like, yes, there's tone matching, but there's only so many, you have to start mm -hmm. with one of the models that are in yeah. the helix. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of amps out there that there's there not a model for, like you're saying. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's a lot of variety. Yeah, that's a good point. And so there's like some, Yes, the tone matching closes the gap, but some gaps will only be yeah. closed so far. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Beautiful. And I think sometimes I think of it like this, like, you know, a lot of the EQs we have in amps are just very simple high and low uh, uh, passes, mm -hmm. you know, that are either happening before or after the gain stage. If you don't crank the high end of your amp, uh, I'm sorry, if you don't crank the power section of your amp, Mm -hmm. Like if you're talking about an amp where you're just kind of getting preamp distortion, you you can just put an EQ. I, I wouldn't think of an EQ before or after the amp that different. So like like you were saying, you lose the ability to change. You can you can get some of that ability. Like if you if you want to you know uh, hit a button and change to a different like amp sound or something, you can turn on 
a drive pedal and push it more and then have an EQ running with it that's automated or whatever. You can go to another sound and have like the EQ change or something. You could just use EQ blocks. Mm. And I know like people are going to disagree with this or whatever, but um, whatever. The, you know, there's, unless you're talking about a Mesa Boogie, like these are simple, like little tone stacks. Like mm -hmm. they don't do a ton. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why a lot of them don't work. Though. So to me, I've never, I just completely don't even, I, the authenticity thing doesn't even come into it for me. Cause I'm just like, well, if Morgan makes an amp, that's less authentic than a real Vox. And I think actually an emulation of that thing and then using some other EQ isn't inherently less accurate than Morgan making an amp for me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like he's not using the real parts. He's using parts that are around today. He's right. not using real tubes. The tubes we have today are not as good as the tubes they had back then. Right. Uh, the transformers and stuff they don't make they're all different you know right. all the old makes of transformers are gone and no one makes them all that stuff was made here in factories that are long gone and they've been replaced with overseas parts and stuff right. so even the very best stuff you know is really good tolerance i guess but you know in terms of accuracy it's like i would just say you either you either play an old vintage thing or you don't and even then you run into the problem of like all that stuff's failing and old so what's more accurate something that's made today to the spec of that part <laughs> or the old part that you know is not sounding like it did right mm. or digital recreation of that old thing right right which theoretically mm. is of course possible right because right. it's we're just talking about producing a sound wave right which should be replicatable mm. because i can give you a song and i can play it on my system and you can play it on your system and they sound the same. And if we did some high level analysis, they sound different because the coloration of this and the, this and the, right. then the, the, you know, the, the, Oh my God, lossless, you know, audio and, you know, MP3s <laughs> and AIM, you know, but it, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, all that to so say, so the verdict I, is don't do it, man. I would do it. I <laughs> would do it. You to be like, honest with you, you like it. I would do it. Listening to those clips, I, I would say listening, no, but I could hear what I hear in the bandmaster. I know that mm. there's there. I think there's a little more of that in there if we keep looking. So you prefer you'll, the you you'll prefer find the some more X. instances of it. You prefer the tone X to the Helix amp blocks. Yeah. So now the comments are going to hate you. Well, okay. <laughs> get him. But obviously the Helix sounds really <laughs> great. I mean, the you know, Helix all the lovers. effects and everything are great. Are great. Yeah. I'm just saying. I don't have a complaint about that. I don't have a complaint about right. any of that stuff, any of the editor or anything. Yeah. All that stuff is great. And so I get why this is paired together a lot. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously people are comparing the small, you know, the smaller units people put together, but this big unit, yeah. would you throw this in there? And that's kind of, you know, we started with the big unit. A lot of people mm -hmm. said in the comments, like, this is overkill for this situation. It's better with a stomp for two reasons. One, it's already small. You put the amp next to it mm -hmm. and it's still small. Two, it frees up DSP on the stomp because people are yeah. already hitting the max yeah. by using an amp and an IR and all this stuff. All they have is six yeah. blocks less. So now they're saying, yeah, get the amp off the unit. Yeah. Now the HX stomp has all of its DSP. But the loop eats up a block two. Yeah. A block two. So I would almost Just think one, I, yeah. would, I would almost think you start running out of blocks before you run out of DSP on a lot of stuff. Yeah, maybe so. People are saying basically I want to run this and this, but I can't if I yeah. run an amp and IR. Yeah. That opens up the possibility yeah. where I can run. A to pitch me the, block and a big verb and yeah. all the stuff. You know, to me, wow. the challenge of the stomp, especially not the stomp XL, mm -hmm. is you, you really you, you lock that loop in, and now you're you know you only have a couple blocks before and only a couple blocks after. You mm -hmm. don't really have that many effects available to you. Right. Whereas the big unit on the Helix, you basically can throw it at in what you got almost Any a whole spot. line yeah. before, a whole line after. Yeah. You could do whatever you want. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of people running it. I saw in the comments of that video running it before or after, like not even in a loop, mm -hmm. you know, so they run the whole HX stop yes, into right, the front right, of the amp. Right, right. So at that point, yeah, it's just like you are running it to a real amp. Right. You're just running it into a Right, which is a cool uh, option. Yeah. I mean, that's a simple way to do like it. Like mm -hmm. guitar into the Helix, out of the Helix, into, into an amplifier. Mix. Yeah. Well, you're talking about HX stomp, you're saying. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so a lot of people stomp, would, would run a stomp one. into like a AC30, so they'll run it into the Yeah, just uh, treat it like their pedal Tonics. board yeah. into Very an interesting. Yeah. Or which two. is a killer rig. Yeah, or two Yeah, of them. which is a killer rig. Yeah. But I, is it an upgrade? Like, I, I mean, you know, did, you know. Uh, I'm saying no, by the way, to answer that question. It's not I, worth the 179. Not, I went in thinking, this is a great upgrade for 179. Mm -hmm. Now I'm thinking, save your money, just play the Helix. I'm shocked I'm saying that, but <laughs> it really did hold up. It did it really it did hold up, up great. Yeah. And then I was just thinking, yeah, so much more flexibility just using what's in there. Mm. And I don't have to always be thinking, where's the Helix set and where's the Tonex set? 
They're all to, they're always set mm-hmm. together. To be pedantic know? about this though, Please. you're not yeah. using what's in there. You're using a tone matched IR that we've made. But we got to buy that for Tonex anyway. You have to spend your money on Tonex or on Helix. Yeah. You can, what do you play on Tonex if you're not spending money? No, that's but that's what I'm saying. It's yeah, our not, comparison you know? was our stuff. I know what you're saying. Our comparison yeah. was was tone match versus this. Yeah. And some people are going to come in and go. All I'm saying is that the, if you pull a Helix out of a box and just start setting it up, yeah, and then you buy a Tonex profile from but us have, and you use a Tonex, well, I that's believe that's not fair, John. You'd have to pull out the Tonex no, and use the stock stuff on the that, Tonex. That's <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I just want to make sure it's like yeah, we're yeah. not talking about stock mm. versus stock. We're talking about like well, us the, doing our thing on two different platforms, and it's like we shouldn't be surprised that that would be a totally different that they're uh, actually really close together. Yeah, a, yeah. a different comparison stock. Helix stock with whatever stock. comes with Tonex. Right. You know? I think though the 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 tone match is just gonna be an EQ, you know, yeah. kind of kind of shift. Um, you know, if the yeah, model but, still feels wrong, you're gonna be that's where I think the bandmaster thing I could hear a little. It wasn't quite as wide. It yeah. didn't breathe quite the same way. It was it was just a little yeah. more like breath in the high end. Right. You know, mm. and, and it was it's subtle. And then there was a little more depth in the low end. Yeah. You know, you kind of hit a chord and it sounds the same, but I as also, you keep playing, you could you could pick up on these little differences. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just like maybe even what frequencies were compressing first or something. Right. You know, that kind of yeah. kind of gives the overall. A, I know the sound you're talking about. Yeah. You and know, it's in there. It's you know there. What's, you know, and you guys have been making these like pedals we love videos too. Mm-hmm. Man. No one loves them, by the way. There's something <laughs> pedals, pedals we there's, love. There's some of the worst performing <laughs> on the channel. But yeah. I've been enjoying it. Right. Well, yeah. the thing is, is like there's like this sound that i keep i can't get it out of my head Mm -hmm. i really don't think i think that those videos and then this with the bandmaster too because you said this is being pushed Mm -hmm. with a pedal from the yeah helix yeah internal man i really don't like the sound of pedal like overdrive pedals pushing digital interesting amps Mm. i just i really don't like it is it possible is the amps we've been using because we've been using like the same three because I thought it was like yeah. a good like variety. No, because I no because yeah. because I think a pedal pushing a real tube amp mm-hmm. is excellent. I think there's something about putting a tone, and I've heard you play your board with the tone X on it, mm-hmm. and you've got your Charlie Brown and your other yeah. stuff, and there's just there's some quality about it that I just don't care for. So you just to be clear, so the board into the tone X, you prefer just a Kemper. Like without, yeah, I would rather just pedals. I would rather have just a profile of that sound gotcha. than trying to push have all the ingredients and being able to do it on the yeah. The comments Separate. are really gonna hate you. You said you don't like That's the fine. Helix, and now you're just saying in the end, forget Tonex and Helix, just get a Kemper. Right. No, I'm saying get. <laughs> they're I'm gonna, saying they're gonna be like, this was just a. You're just trying to convince us to get a Kemper. This was a ruse. Yeah, yeah. It was a ruse the no, whole no, time. No, no, no. <laughs> you no. What Poor I'm John. trying to get you to do is to buy. Uh, the what for whatever platform you have, buy one of our products because <laughs> yeah. I think p- trying to put pedals in front of it th- just for me, I don't mm. think that uh, an mm. overdrive pedal into a digital solution does the same thing as into a tube amp. Mm. I don't think it's sound. There's like a quality about it that mm. I just don't. Yeah, and I noticed that during the Bandmaster. Yeah, demo. I had a. This is not the same thing that you're saying, but a similar thing um, is. Did the Helix um, take down the quality of the Tonex <laughs> by like mm. not running actual pedals right. into it? Like, like did it not? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like we're putting, we're making the Tonex fit into the Helix world mm-hmm. with all of its overdrives, all of mm-hmm. its boosts, and all that stuff like that. It's like this is not my favorite sound of the Tonex. Like mm-hmm. I would rather take the Tonex out of the Helix mm-hmm. and put it on a board with the Strymon mm-hmm. stuff and like a Timmy. So and all possibly that. some some of the uh, uh, coloration of maybe the compressor or the overdrives, mm-hmm. yeah. the, any of the verbs. Running and stuff. a software 808 into mm-hmm. a Tonex, that's probably not my favorite sound. Yeah, you're always you gonna know? be. So, I mean, this is an inherent limitation of any modeler right any mm-hmm. all-in-one unit the yeah, larger sure. they get the more opportunity that the person making it has to get something wrong or do something that you don't like yeah mm-hmm. you know a good example of that is in the helix there are two there's a there's a mouse and a v- vermin right yeah uh, different rats yeah yeah and the reason is is that the first rat was broken the mouse they realized later after they did it was not functioning correctly and so they redid it to make it accurate. But they were like, this is a real big box rat. So they modeled a rat that was broken. Yeah. 
And then model a second one, but now you have access to both. I think they fixed it. I think they fixed it and modeled it again. No comment. But they didn't want to take it out because people had been... I don't know if it was broken or if some part was not original and they thought it was or if Mm -hmm. there had been some mistake. Maybe someone had had, uh, uh, wired it back together wrong, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, or whatever. Like a taco bowl. Maybe the pot had a wrong... You know, maybe yeah. the game pot had been replaced. Yeah, like, like a, a taco broken bowl. version, right, right? Like a taco bowl. Maybe right. one of the. I don't know what it was, right. but then they released it as a second pedal to fix it because they didn't want to mess up everyone's settings by yeah. rechanging what the rat sounded like because people are using it for years. I love, I love software. This is why I love software. I know, isn't right. that great? You just you, you got just, more now. Yeah, right. our mistake. Right, totally. <laughs> and so that also, you know, whatever you like or dislike about uh, the effects in a multi effects unit is what it is. You know. Yeah. Um, the thing mm. I was thinking too is like, is the is the effect loop itself mm. having any effect on how the tone X yeah. sounds? Sure, good question. Like totally. if you weren't running any other blocks mm. and you just compared the tone X yeah. through that, yeah. Also, and the tone X by people itself. brought this up. You know, late latency stacking is uh, something. You yeah, know, right. in the way we're using it, you have to add the helix latency. Uh, and the Tonex latency, and I think because you go out of the loop and, and the back block, in, yeah. you have to add it again. The helix latency is doubled, right. and then you have this other unit. So if you did, if you went there and then you went into another unit, like say some sort of a uh, another digital device somewhere else, uh, you, you'd be adding all those latencies together. You could get to the point. How many loops does a helix have? Well, you could four, put in I think, two. The big oh, one? four. Four loops. Well, two stereo, four mono. I think. Is yeah. It? Yeah. Yeah. You're wanting to put four tone X's into a loop of a helix no, and I measure it. I want to put a, a Kemper and a quad cortex and a and, and then a, just go loop loop and loop a tone loop. X and just put them all on. Oh That's sure. another video. I bet you still would not pick up a ton of latency. Like they're just, all very low, and if you add them together, you might start to get to something that you could kind of feel. But I right. think it would still be pretty low. Right. I'm talking you about know. milliseconds of yeah, like a it, little it, bit. Yeah, it would be. It would yeah. definitely be a feel thing, not a sound right. thing. Yeah. We wouldn't get into that. Oh right. no. I didn't feel people. any. Some people were asking, did you feel yeah. latency? Yeah. None at all. But, yeah. yeah. No, people are nuts. They don't understand how fast these, these things are. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. It, so, <laughs> it, you know, is it an upgrade? Uh, we tried to upgrade it. And yeah. I think at the end of the day, it's kind of up to you. I would lean towards, I would probably not play a Helix on its own anyway. Mm-hmm. I But I would have a rig that in incorporates a helix product like a stomp excel or an hx so i th- the way i run things i don't necessarily choose to normally dial in all my stuff that way i like to have a couple effects that i can always hit which is why i like stamp uh stomp snap is it called or oh yeah the yeah, different you know, layers yeah. I, I like being able to go to one that's like a different sound but then i have options to turn on and off a couple things at the top yeah. i like performance over the same way yeah so if i were to build that a rig little virtual pedal board yeah i yeah. kind of wouldn't mind if uh using it more in the stomp way or i wouldn't mind making multiple changes um, but leaving the amp its way, I would probably lean towards a Stomp XL or an F- or a HX Effects mm. with the Tone X thing and maybe one or two other pedals over a Helix anyway. That would just be how I would run it. So to me, the 179 is great. I would buy a Tone X mm. 